The great estate of Collinwood has never known a more explosive night than this. Cheb has definite proof that Barnabas is a traitor to the Leviathans. And before his punishment comes, Barnabas is determined to steal the sacred Naga box so that no other innocent human can be made a member of the vicious cult. He goes to the antique shop, and leaving Quentin outside as his guard succeeds in taking the box from Jeb's room. Then Barnabas, alone, takes the box to the one place he knows it can be destroyed. It was here that I first saw this box, the blackest day of my life. Spirits, if you are listening, know that I no longer need you. Know that my days will be spent ridding my world of the Leviathans. The shadow of the bat summoned from hell by Jeb Hawks has fallen across Barnabas Collins and once more he is a vampire. Already the bloodlust has made him kill tonight, but before the dawn comes, he knows there is something else he must do. He must try to destroy the antique shop and with it the upstairs room the only place he knows where Jeb can transform himself into a powerful, inhuman killer. Reading never come from any room again. state of Collinwood, for Barnabas has destroyed the antique shop, and with it, the room where Jeb must go to assume his other evil form. But Elizabeth has taken Megan into the house, and given Jeb the deserted coach house on the estate. 
Megan is determined to consecrate a room there, a room where Jeb can become the true Leviathan. I don't want the room. It was all right when I was younger, and I had to change all the time. But now I'm me. I'm in this form. And I see no reason why I can't remain in this form. You are what's in that room. Jeb is only what the world sees. <laughs> but the world seems to like it fine. You mean Carolyn Stoddard seems to like it fine. What does she do? I didn't give up everything in my life so that someone like her could have a, a date to take her to dinner. If you want her, then it must be in the way the book demands, the way the Leviathans demand. Why? Would you be jealous otherwise? Well, I've, I've given up a lot for you. So you tell me. Well, I'm tired of hearing it. Just as I'm tired of you thinking of me as Alexander and Michael, and that you have some special hold over me. Well, you're not special anymore. Because things are different. I'm different. And they're different between us. No, that, that's not true. Is it it? There. I hear someone coming. I can't see anyone. Who is it? Who is it? Who did you make angry? Earlier this night, Carolyn Stoddard woke from a strange and disturbing dream in which she saw an empty coffin in her father's grave. She related this dream to a young man named Jeb Hawks, and he became even more disturbed by it than she. He went to the grave with a companion and discovered the coffin was not empty. Instead, to his horror, he saw the corpse of Paul Stoddard staring up at him with a vengeful smile. It was almost as though well, Paul Stoddard had, had remained buried alive all this time, just, just waiting for Jeb to come and open his coffin. I can understand why Jeb was so terrified. So can I. But I hope Jeb had presence of mind enough to put the coffin back in the grave and cover it. Did he? Jeb said we had to burn it. So you burned it. And Jeb thinks that has solved the problem. Yes. You don't think so? <laughs> no, my dear. I do not. Well, that seems to amuse you. Well, let us say that it pleases me. Why? Because burning a corpse merely disposes of a body. The spirit of that body cannot be burned somewhere. In the darkness of this night, the spirit of Paul Stoddard is waiting. Given the opportunity, he will haunt Jeb Hawks to his own grave. But, but you won't let him do that. Who or what is to stop me? If you let anything happen to Jeb, I swear, I swear I'll kill you!
It is night at Collinwood, and once again, night is the only time that Barnabas Collins can know. Through the betrayal of another, the curse of the living dead has been re-inflicted upon him. Earlier this night, he learned the name of the man who betrayed him. He then went to a house on an island off the coast to warn Angelique that her husband was the man. She refused to believe him, but later when she saw her husband with the nefarious Nicholas Blair, she realized Barnabas had been telling the truth. I wanted it to work out. I really wanted you to be with me, and I'm sorry you can't. Goodbye, Angelique. 